It was in 1989 when I separated finally from my first husband. And it was about three weeks after that, and after feeling all this despair, that one day my mother went to visit her sister that lived in San Francisco. And while she was there, a couple of senior LDS missionaries came to my aunt to visit her. And when I came back from work that night, my mother told me, guess what? I met this wonderful couple at your aunt's home, and they invited us to come to church tomorrow. And she said, would you mind coming with me? And since I was, you know, going through that very hard time, I just said to myself, I will go. I really don't have anything to lose. And that was the day when my life just changed. Um, I didn't know what to expect, but the moment that I stepped into that building, I just felt this wonderful feeling of being in a special place. I needed to find peace and solace for my soul. I needed to find a place where my, I could help my son grow and become a good man. And it was the most amazing feeling. Uh, it was a state conference. So I sat in this huge room full of people, everybody just happy to be there. And I sat there and I started listening. And every single message seemed to be directed at me. I felt so much hope by just listening to them. And I just thought, that's exactly what I want. That's exactly how I feel and what I need in my life. When the conference was over and we were meeting with the missionaries again outside, I, I just told them, can you please come <laughs> to my house and teach me more about this? Because I want to know more. I need to know more. So we set up an appointment with the missionaries. So that day, you know, I was really looking forward to meeting with the missionaries that evening. And it was around 5 p.m. And I was at the house where I um, would take care of this girl. And I was with my son. And all of a sudden, this, the ground started shaking. So it was another earthquake. <laughs> and I felt, oh my goodness, what is going on? And I just grabbed, you know, embraced the children and waited for it to, to stop. And I thought, oh wow, what is going to happen now? I, I thought the traffic, I'm sure the traffic is horrible. Maybe some of the street lights are not working and it's going to be, take me a long time to do this route that I usually took going home. When I went home, I called the missionaries and I told them, I'm sorry, but you know, we don't have electricity and probably it's not a good night for you to be out. So can we postpone our meeting? The missionaries came to our home and they started teaching us. And it was amazing to see that everything that they said made sense and gave me hope. And they were so happy and I loved the relationship that they had with each other. And I wanted to feel that joy. I wanted to feel that happiness. So about three weeks after they started coming to our home, my mother, my brother and me, we joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and we got baptized. That day in which I was baptized was an amazing day. And then um, receiving the, the, the gift of the Holy Ghost and knowing that I could have that gift with me if I was faithful. Uh, it was such a feeling of, of feeling complete and whole and, and uh, finally being where I, I belonged. Just a few days after that, I was watching the news and I saw that uh, the Berlin Wall had fallen. And for me, that was so significant because it was a symbol of captivity and injustice, and terrible things that were happening. And for me, it was like a signal that my life was going to just be so different from that moment on. So I said, okay, a new life is starting. We were baptized in November. So soon after that, we started singing Christmas uh, hymns and songs in, in, in church. And for me, that was so sweet because for the first time in my life, I felt the true spirit of Christmas. 
and uh, the reason why we celebrate Christmas. Something that we do in Nicaragua is that usually we have like a nativity set and we put all the little figures, but there is one that is not there yet, uh, which is the, the baby Jesus. We usually wait until Christmas Eve at midnight to actually put him there. I remember that day when um, Christmas Day came after I joined the church and uh, my son put the little Jesus in the nativity and just knowing what that little baby came to do, that he came to show us the way, to give an example to us on how we, we can be and to suffer for us too. So he could understand our sorrows and our feelings and our tribulations and so he could extend mercy and, and, and love to us if we turn to him. Uh, I think that was just an amazing time in my life that uh, gave me an assurance and the hope in the future. Just a few weeks after I was, I was baptized into the church, they extended me a calling, which was to be the Sunday school teacher in the gospel principles class. And I was scared to death, you know. I was a new member, but uh, they told me, don't worry, uh, there will always be people there that can help you. And when I was teaching that Sunday school class, and one day uh, a young man came. His name was Carlos Aburto. And uh, of course, he was just another person there, but it happened that we became friends. Maybe a year after I met him, I moved to Utah. And after two years of living in Utah, I went back in, during Christmas to see my sister and I went to church and, um, and I just, you know, had the desire to talk to Carlos because I knew he was a good man and I, he was my friend and I wanted to talk to him about life. We realized that we had a lot of common, that we really liked each other. And I remember we, during that trip, we had a conversation during hours and hours, and it just felt like being with my best friend. So we started dating. I came back to Utah because that was a very short trip, and we would talk over the phone. And about a mo two months later, the, he came for a visit. To, he stayed in Utah for two weeks, and that's when we got engaged. I was able to marry him in the temple, and our son was able to be sealed to us, which was a beautiful moment uh, when the three of us were kneeling in the altar, starting that eternal family. After that, we, we had two children. He is a miracle in my life. That's the way I see him. Uh, he's a good man. He is faithful in the church. He loves serving in his callings, and, Ever since, he has been my best friend. Um, it hasn't been easy, but we have had a beautiful marriage. I remember the story of this cathedral in Germany that was destroyed during one of the world wars. And then the people in this town, in this city, actually rebuilt that church. And you can see in the church right now how some of the bricks are black because they are the, the original bricks that were burned during the bombing. And then I, I realized that my life is like that church. You know, I have gone through very hard times. The scars are still there. The consequences, the, the pain is still there. But the Lord has rebuilt my life and has allowed me to, to have joy in this life through His tender mercies and through the atonement of our Lord. I know that He is our Savior and our Redeemer, that He is the source of peace and healing. And now I have the opportunity to be a leader for the women of the church and of the world and they can see that um, we all go through hard times. We all have tribulation in our life, but that God is mindful of each of us. He's mindful of me and he's mindful of each of us and that he is always extending 
his arms of mercy and love towards us so we can turn to him and have a better life.